Hello SGBers, I'm Companion Wolf with another Smile Game Builder tutorial. As many of you are no doubt aware by now, SGB was recently updated to version 1.12. This is a significant update as it provides long-awaited battle functionality as well as some fairly big changes. I did try to live stream a showcase of these updates for the official tutorial 63 but encountered so many problems that I cancelled it. Sorry to anyone who was interested in watching that live stream. Streamlabs just would not go live no matter what and when I finally managed to resolve the problem and actually go live I was 45 minutes from the original live stream time and I just couldn't get into it somehow. Maybe it was just the anger and frustration at Murphy's Law had struck again. So anyway, with a new update, there will be plenty of tutorials, notably using the new functions. At the moment, this tutorial, the official tutorial 63, is just an overview of these new features and updates. Daily Motion will soon be the official new home for my SGB tutorials and showcases. It's not really something I want to do, so for now I'll continue uploading these tutorials to YouTube for a while at least before properly migrating completely. It depends on what happens between now and a bit later. Whereas videos on Daily Motion will be longer and more detailed, the videos on YouTube will generally be shorter, less detailed, and a little bit more irregular sometime in the future. I know, I know, this is probably inconvenient for many people, but I feel it has become one of those necessary evils unless and until there's a proper, workable, viable option to YouTube, or until YouTube gets its red pencil head out of its ass. Anyway, as usual, you can keep up to date by following me on Twitter, Facebook, the SGB Discord server, and the SGB Athenaeum blog. And if you're of a mind to, you can donate through PayPal. Every donation is greatly appreciated, and thank you for those who have already donated. If you want to be notified of when I upload new videos here at YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button as well as the bell icon. And on Daily Motion, you can subscribe to my channel. But your best bet is to check my social media accounts, especially my Twitter account, to make sure you don't miss a video or tutorial or any of the other projects that I am undertaking. So without further ado, I'll go through the updates one by one, giving a brief explanation of each as necessary. Firstly, there are some new additions to the system graphics, primarily used for battles. And these can be customized in the same way that uh, many of the other graphics can be customized, but I'll cover that in a future tutorial. The next area is in items, where you can now, let me see, consumables, you can now trigger a common event, such as displaying a map, or reading a book, or even displaying a separate animation or another sequence of events when the item is used and in weapons you can now tweak or alter the damage formula for each weapons which is based on the stats and the armor defense and so on but if you click on these three little dots you will be able to set every single one of these like that and obviously you would need to put in any operators which is very very handy and again I will cover that part in another tutorial maybe a more dedicated one once I've figured out exactly how 
all of this works and uh, blends in together. In skills, there is also an option to execute a common event if the skill is used, which can be used on the map or in battle. And there's another one, recovers HP with the damage dealt, causes KO after use. I'm not sure, actually, I'm not sure if these two were there already because this is an area that I don't really delve too much into. It's mostly the items. Anyway, effects on allies and effects on enemies both have damage by formula as well, which is exactly the same as with weapons. Now for the other updates, in dialogue, you can now display text on the screen as an image. It's just a regular text string, which will then be treated as an image. And this is perhaps very useful for speech bubbles or text appearing randomly at specific events, or even in battles. Again, I'll cover it in another tutorial. And you can give it a regular XY value or values XY values set by variables. In addition to this, we now have options for text decoration, which is on page 115 of the SGB manual or help file. And as you can see, there are bold, italic, change the text size, color. Um, and these are basically like footnotes. And then you have weights, blink. Personally, I would not use this as I find that totally annoying. But I guess this might have its uses. You know, and wait for manual input, or you can close the window automatically after a certain amount of time. And then you can display what this does is it displays whatever after that. And it is compatible with all of types of messages. So, onto the battle events and here are some ready-made templates the first two are to automate attacks during battle either using regular attacks or with skills if the specified character has over half of their MP then skill A will be used automatically and this could be something like a, a normal attack skill or an offensive spell and if MP is over 25% but HP is less than 25% then skill B will be used maybe for casting healing or defensive spells. The next one is a countdown timer which, as it states, counts down. When the counter reaches zero, you can make something happen, like defeating a monster in a certain time frame, or doing something within the battle. Otherwise, the party could be captured and thrown in jail. And similarly, with finish within the specified turn, it just means that the monsters need to be defeated in a certain number of turns. If you don't, then something can happen, such as a boss you're fighting can release a devastating blow, or a building might explode, and it will be game over if you want to be particularly cruel. And the final one is transform monster. This is for one of those scenarios where boss monsters in particular have several forms if its HP is less than a certain amount, in this case, half. You can convert all of these to a 
advanced events to edit them yourself, but I'll reserve that for future tutorials. Now as far as the battle event panel itself, the triggers are self-explanatory. When the battle starts, every turn, synchronize and repeat, and when the battle ends. You will notice another tab, Crossed Swords, which has all of the battle commands or battle events here. The Display Hide Battle window enables or disables the status window in battle. The status window is that section at the bottom of the battles that displays the party members and their stats and when it's disabled it will no longer appear and all you'll have you can still have the commands so the next one is recover reduce battle characters HP and MP which is a bit of a misnomer because it only applies to monsters so perhaps this should be recover reduce monsters HP MP and it is it does exactly as it states and heals or reduces the specified monsters HP or MP incidentally this applies to the number of monsters in the battle Number one would be the first monster, right the way to number six, the maximum amount of monsters you can have. One possible use of this could be if a monster is immune to fire, then casting fire spells might restore their HP. Once again, that'll be for another tutorial. Make Battle Character Abnormal Cure, which is again self-explanatory. You can inflict or heal certain abnormal conditions on the specified battle characters, whether individuals, party members, or monsters, and whichever one you inflict or cure can be set there. Terminate Battle Forcibly. As it states, you can force the end of the battle for whatever reason. Next one is spawn a new monster. As it says on the tin, so to speak, you can spawn a new monster. Like when a monster summons another one into the battle um, or something similar, you can specify all kinds of things. And once again, just like the normal battle, you can position the spawned monster anywhere on the map. And the final one in battles is get battle information where you can store various stats in variables in the same way you can normal variables. So you have and status in party and status in monsters which again refers to the number of of the member of the party or in the monsters the last battle result and the target number of the last used skill and then you have the operators as well exactly the same as the advanced variable box but to do with battles next in the player and movement tab there is another option to change characters equipment provided that the equipment type is already in the inventory and in branches you have two more functions the first is to check whether in battle which determines obviously whether or not a battle is taking place this is unavailable if you're in the battle events you're obviously referring to the battles it's uh, available in common events and regular events you can also check if a certain 
monster is in the battle with the check monsters in battle. So if this was set, if the first monster in the group is a slime, do something, otherwise do something else. And the final edition is under miscellaneous, where you have note. Now this is exactly like um, HTML, where you do this, and that represents a remark, or RPG Maker's label. It's basically meant for personal notes, which make it easier to break things down into sections for reference, and SGB will just ignore them. Yeah. It's a bit like what I did in the variable setup for my common event here. The note, I've separated them into each. One is for the keys and the variables for the camera and so on all the way down to the bottom. And I think I did the same for rest events. Yes. So didn't sleep well, slept like a log, etc. And that's it for this tutorial, which, as I mentioned at the beginning, is intended as an overview only of the major features and functions that version 1.12 has to offer. Over the next coming weeks, I will continue producing more tutorials, especially focusing on, on the battle aspects of it, but also some of the other ones as well. What I would like to do as well at some point is return to some of the older tutorials because a lot of the things that were not possible before this update are now possible and so I'd like to bring those features up to date. All of the links I mentioned throughout the video will be in the description below. And that ends this showcase video. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.